Hello, my dear students. I am Professor Geeta Bansal from Punjab University, Chandigarh. Leadership, as has already been discussed in the previous module, is defined as the act or process of influencing people as that they will strive willingly and enthusiastically towards the achievement of the group goals. Now, the importance of leadership lies in motivating. It lies in creating confidence amongst the team members and of course, building up the morale of its people. Different authorities and researchers have viewed leadership differently. Some of them put a lot of emphasis on personal options, while others view leadership as situational. Now, the research conducted by behavioral scientists to find out as to what makes a leader effective have resulted in various theories of leadership which we will be discussing in this module from a short while from now. My dear students, let me give you a snapshot of the various theories which we are going to discuss in this module. The theories can be divided into early trade theories, behavioral theories, contingency theories and some of the very recent leadership theories. In behavioral theories, we will discuss Kurt Lewin's leadership styles, the Ohio State studies, the Michigan studies and the leadership grid. In the contingency theories, we will discuss the Fiedler's contingency theory, the Robert House's path goal theory, Varum and Yetan's normative decision making theory and Harsey and Blanker's situational leadership model. Some of the recent leadership theories are leader-member exchange theory and inspirational leadership. Apart from this, there are other types of leadership theories which are transformational leadership, charismatic leadership and authentic leadership. Let us start with the trait theories of leadership. My dear friends, Thomas Carlyle was a precursor of the trait theory. He said that there are certain traits like physical traits, personality traits and personal abilities which differentiates leaders from non-leaders. In spite of all the research, it has not been validated that trait theory is valid for measuring leadership qualities. Well, my dear students, we have been talking about the trait theory of leadership. Now, let me tell you before we proceed that there are different traits that can differentiate leaders from non-leaders. I am sure you will associate more with this theory as you already have observed in your surroundings that leaders exhibit different traits. Now, let us try to understand what these traits could be. To start with, first of all, it is the physical traits which differentiates leaders from non-leaders. Now, the physical traits is the genetic makeup of the person, which comprises his height, his weight, his complexion, his age and of course the energy and the stamina of that person. However, research does not prove that physical traits have anything to do with leadership. We all know of Hitler who was barely 5 feet tall. Another trait is the personality traits. Personality is something which is subjective in nature. It could be one's creativity, 
it could be one's adaptability to the surroundings, it could be one's dominance, it could be one's self-confidence, it could be one's integrity or emotional intelligence to name a few. However, some evidence has shown that leaders are more adaptable, they are more self-confident and they are more emotionally intelligent than non-leaders. Then comes the personal abilities of the persons or we can say which differentiates leaders from non-leaders. These would include the social skills, the communication skills, the intelligence cooperativeness of the person, etc. Now again, research has shown positive relationship between a person's personal abilities and his leadership skills. Now, in spite of all the research, it has not been validated that trait theory is valid for measuring leadership qualities. Let us talk about the limitation of the trait theory. Well, the inability of the trait approach to consistently define specific traits that would differentiate successful and unsuccessful leaders led to the conclusion that emphasis on the behavior of leaders which could be measured rather than emphasis on traits which could not be measured were an appropriate new research strategy. The behavioral theories are based on the assumption that leaders can be made if specific behaviors are identified and are taught. According to this theory, a particular behavior of a leader provides greater satisfaction to the followers and so they recognize him as a good leader. Moreover, trait theories did not address how leaders behaved. The behavioral theories would be discussed under Levin's leadership styles, Ohio State studies, Michigan studies and the leadership grid. The Levin's leadership styles. It says that leadership is not situation specific but leader specific whereby the leaders leading styles will be differentiating the leaders from the non-leaders. There are three leadership styles in the form of an autocratic leader, a democratic leader and a laissez-faire leader. Now, an autocratic leader usually follows strict rules and regulations and controls the work environment where the followers do not have much discretion but to follow his instructions. The democratic leader is collaborative, cooperative, responsive and believes in taking decisions with the followers' consensus, unlike the autocratic leader. The laissez-faire leader believes in non-leadership. He does not use his authority and responsibility, which often leads to role ambiguity on the part of both the leaders and the followers, leading to conflicting situations at the workplace. The Ohio State Studies the research conducted at the Ohio State University aimed at measuring specific leadership behaviors says that identify the behaviors exhibited by the leaders, determine what effect these behaviors had on employee satisfaction and performance, and identify the best leadership style. According to the Ohio State studies, there are two significant behavioral dimensions. One, the initiating structure and two, the consideration behavior. In the initiating structure, this behavior defines the roles of a leader and a follower so that everyone knows what is expected. This includes establishing formal lines of communication and deciding how tasks are to be performed. In the consideration behavior, here the aim is to have a nurturing and a friendly work environment based on mutual 
trust the Michigan studies. The Michigan studies found out that the leadership behavior has important implications on the followers' contribution to the organization and their emotional well-being. Here, two styles of leadership were identified, namely employee-oriented leadership style and the production-oriented leadership style. The two styles of leadership identified by Michigan studies are the employee-oriented style, which believes in harnessing congenial relationships at the workplace. The workplace is not reeling under the pressure of too many written rules and regulations and the leader exhibits considerable concern for the employee's needs and aspirations. The production-oriented style is characterized by getting things done through close supervision, lots of written rules and regulations to control the employee's behavior, unlike the employee-oriented style. The Leadership Grid, a Contemporary Extension Robert Blake and Malton have designed an organization development program emphasizing the importance of the two basic leader behaviors. One, concern for people and two, concern for production. Originally identified in the Ohio State and Michigan studies, this has also an added component where a leader has low to high concern for people and low to high concern for production. Now, each type of concern is ranked on a scale from 1 to 9, resulting in 5 managerial styles. Further investigation into the grid has led to the outcome of two more leadership styles, resulting in seven major combinations of leader behavior. The managerial grid as shown by or as given by Blake and Morton shows the concern for people on the x-axis and the concern for production on the y-axis. Here, the concern for production or people is either high or low. When the concern for people or production is low, it is called impoverished management. When the concern for production is high and the concern for people is low, it is called authority obedience leadership. On the other hand, if the concern for people is high and concern for production is low, this is called a country club management. While if the concern for production and people is both high, this is called as team management. Now, when the manager shows mediocre concern for both the people and production, it is called the organization man management. Let us just study these combinations in a little bit of detail. In impoverished management, the leader will exert just enough effort to sustain by. He shows minimal concern for production or people thereby resulting in the minimum contribution from the employees. In the authority compliance management, the leader emphasizes on having efficient production through high concern for production and low concern for people, resulting in maximum contribution of the employees. In the country club management, the leader aims at creating a comfortable and a friendly workplace environment with low concern for production and high concern for people, resulting in a comfortable, conflict-free working environment. In the organization man management, the leader shows moderate levels of concern for both people and production, resulting in adequate performance of the employees. In the team management, the leader shows high levels of concern for both people and production, resulting in the creation of a highly productive and committed team of employees. The two new combinations of leadership behavior, that is paternalistic management, shows promises for reward for good performance and does not hesitate in reprimanding or punishing for poor performance just like a father figure. In the opportunistic management grid, 
the manager applies the style which returns him the maximum self benefits let us talk about the various contingency theories which are there one is the fiedler's contingency theory second is the robert house's path goal theory third is the broom yetton's normative decision theory and fourth is the hartsey and blanchard's situational leadership model contingency theories now dear students contingency theories of leadership focus on particular variables related to the environment that might determine which particular style of leadership is best suited for the situation according to this theory no leadership style is best in all situations success depends upon a number of variables including the leadership style the quality of the followers and aspects of the situation four important ideas underlying the contingency theory are one there is no universal or one best way to manage or lead the teams two the design of an organization and its subsystems must fit with the environment three the management style is appropriate both to the tasks undertaken and the nature of the work group four the needs of an organization are better satisfied when it is properly designed fiedler's contingency theory fred fiedler's contingency model focused on individual leadership the situational contingency theory proposes that the effectiveness of a leader is determined by two factors the leader's need gratification and the favorableness of the leader's situation that is the degree to which the leadership situation provides the leader with control and influence over the outcomes the theory further assumes that the leaders are either task oriented or relationship oriented depending upon what satisfies their primary need gratification the primary need gratification of task oriented or relationship oriented leaders are the needs of the task oriented leaders are fulfilled with the achievement of the desired tasks while the relationship oriented leaders needs are satisfied by developing and nurturing good interpersonal relations at the workplace the three conditions that could be the outcome of this theory are one the least preferred coworker scale this theory aims at finding out whether the leader is task oriented or relationship oriented through the least preferred coworker scale now this lpc which aims at identifying the workers with whom the leader least prefers to work with this is a scale comprising of 16 8 point bipolar objective sets now let us find out how the scoring in lpc is done the leaders who gives good scores to their coworkers that is pleasant efficient happy fun loving etc are more inclined towards building good interpersonal relations and are hence termed as high lpc or relationship oriented leaders while the leaders who give negative scores to their workers like unpleasant inefficient gloomy etc are more inclined towards completing their tasks are termed as low lpc or task oriented leaders though this lpc score has not found much acceptability due to its poor measurement reliability situational favorableness now the favorableness or unfavorableness of the situation would depend upon three dimensions the task structure that is how clearly the rules and regulations are laid down the position power the legitimacy of the leader's authority to reward and punish leader member relations 
This is measured by the general atmosphere at the workplace, whether it is friendly or unfriendly, with healthy relationship or is mired by conflicts. Now, the favorableness of the leader's situation depends upon the leader's position power, the structure of the teams and the task, and finally, the quality of relationship between the leaders and the followers. Let us try to understand what is leadership effectiveness. Now, according to Fiedler's contingency theory, the task-oriented leaders with low LPC score and relationship-oriented leaders with high LPC score will be effective only when they are in the right situation. Where the task-oriented leaders will be effective in either very favorable or very unfavorable leadership situations. The relationship-oriented leaders are effective in situations of intermediate favorableness. Moreover, research has shown that they encourage a lot of innovation and creativity which enables them to capture the market faster than the task-oriented leaders. According to Robert House's path goal theory, this is one of the most respected approaches to leadership. Now, the essence of the theory is that it is the leader's job to assist his or her followers in attaining their goals and to provide the necessary direction and support to ensure their goals are compatible with the overall objectives of the group or the organization. Robert House's Path Goal Theory now, according to this theory, leaders attempt to influence their subordinates' perceptions of the payoff or accomplishing their goals and show them ways to achieve the goals. Thus, a leader's behavior is motivational to the degree it makes subordinates need satisfaction contingent on effective performance and provide the coaching, guidance, support and rewards that are necessary for effective performance. House suggests that the leader should make desired rewards available and clarify for the subordinate the kinds of behavior that will lead to the reward. Let's try to find out the details of the House's path goal theory. In this theory, there are four types of leadership behavior which have been described. Let's take them up one by one. The first leadership behavior would be in the nature of directive leadership. This is characterized by a leader who informs the subordinates what is expected of them and provides specific guidance to them to achieve that. This is called directive leadership behavior. On the other hand, we have supportive leadership behavior, which is characterized by a leader who is friendly and approachable and shows concerns for the status, well-being and personal needs of the subordinates. Then we have achievement-oriented leadership behavior which is characterized by a leader who sets challenging goals, expects subordinates to perform their best and shows a lot of confidence that the subordinates will perform well. In a way, he is encouraging 
the subordinates to perform by showing confidence in them. Then we have participative leadership, which is characterized by a leader who consults the subordinates and asks for their suggestions before taking any decision. Now, this participative leadership behavior, it inculcates a lot of confidence and brings the morale of the subordinates at an all-time high and is called a participative leadership. Now, apart from these four leadership behaviors, the house's path goal theory has two situational variables as well, which is one, the subordinates characteristics and second, it is the task characteristics. Well, the subordinate characteristics would include the subordinate's ability. For example, their self-esteem and their level of self-actualization and their personality traits like they may be authoritative or they might be close-minded. On the other hand, the task characteristics would include whether the task is a simple one or a difficult one, whether the task is in the nature of being stressful or is it non-stressful, whether the task is dull or whether the task is interesting and of course whether the task is safe or is it some danger which is involved in that particular task. Now, this theory is not free from limitations. Two of the limitations of path goal theory are, it's more flexible than Fiedler's theory in that it proposes that a manager uses different types of behaviors in different situations. Moreover, a leader can enhance performance by either increasing the rewards or making the path towards those rewards easier to travel. Varum and Yetan's Normative Theory the normative theory offers guidelines on how decisions ought to be made in specific situations. The five decision-making methods ranging from highly autocratic to highly participative are identified. The appropriate method depends on the answer to seven questions relating to the problem being solved and the subordinates involved. The first three protects the quality of the decision and the final four enhance the subordinate acceptance. This is a leader participation model that related leadership behavior and participation to decision making. They assume that leaders use four basic styles in making decisions that is authoritative, consultative, group based and delegative. The five styles used in decision making are to decide. The manager makes the decision alone and announces it. Two, consult individually. The manager takes the individual input of the group members and then take the decision. Three, consult the group. Here the manager presents the problem in front of the whole group collectively and takes the inputs and then takes the decision. Fourth, facilitate. Here, the manager acts as a facilitator only by defining the boundaries for the decision and the group is allowed to take initiative in decision making. Fifth, delegate. Here, the manager allows and encourages the group to take decisions within prescribed limits. Hershey and Blenkert's Situational Theory Hershey and Blenkert developed a two-dimensional model where it is possible to be high or low on both 
task and relation behavior. This framework of Hersey and Blanchard is a function of three variables, task behavior, relationship behavior, and the maturity level of the employees. Accordingly, the situational leadership will assume either a telling style, a selling style, a participating style, or a delegating style. Situational leadership. On the horizontal axis, the leader's concern for task behavior is there. And on the vertical axis, the leader's concern for relationship behavior is there. The mature followers respond to delegating and participating styles and the immature followers respond to telling and selling styles. As has already been described, the leadership behavior of telling, selling, participating and delegating will depend upon the maturity level of the employees. Hersey and Blanchard's theory provides a useful and understandable framework for situational leadership. The model suggests that there is no one best leadership style for all situations. The manager's leadership style must be adaptable and flexible to meet the changing needs of employees and the situation. Leadership theories in the recent times. 1. Leader member exchange theory and 2. Inspirational leadership. The inspirational leadership can take the form of transformational leadership, charismatic leadership or authentic leadership. Leader member exchange theory. This is also called popularly as the LMX theory which maintains that leaders usually form varying relationships with their followers where some of them become a part of their in-group who enjoy more attention and are given higher levels of authority and responsibility than the followers who are in the out-group and do not enjoy the attention of the leader. Inspirational Leadership Some new research has shown inclination towards inspirational leadership which has been identified as transformational leadership, charismatic leadership, or authentic leadership. Transformational leaders. These are the leaders who recognize, exploit, and satisfy the needs of the followers while elevating them into high levels of motivation and morality. Transformational leaders exhibit the following characteristics. 1. They have charisma or individualized influence. They show inspirational motivation. 3. They are able to intellectually stimulate their people. And 4. They have individualized consideration. Lastly, there is charismatic leadership. This leadership style is visible when the leader displays exceptional personal abilities, knowledge, skills and certain behaviors which gives him an edge over others. Alright, my dear students, let's find out what are the characteristics of a charismatic leader. Well, a charismatic leader is bestowed with certain traits like self-confidence, he has a great vision and of course he has the ability to articulate his vision. You know what is self-confidence? They have complete confidence in their judgment and ability which adds charisma to their personality and makes them a leader. On the other hand, they are bestowed with a lot of great vision. This is an idealized goal that proposes a future better than the status quo. The greater the disparity between idealized goal and the status quo, the more likely that followers will attribute extraordinary vision to the leader. Then a charismatic leader has an ability to articulate that vision. That is, 
they are able to clarify and state the vision in terms that are understandable to others. This articulation demonstrates an understanding of the followers' needs and hence acts as a motivating force. Then the characteristics of the charismatic leaders are they have strong convictions about their vision where they perceive they are perceived as being strongly committed and willing to take on high personal risk they incur high costs and engage in self sacrifice to achieve their vision now the charismatic leaders demonstrate behavior that is just out of the ordinary. Believe me, those with charisma engage in behavior that is perceived as being novel, that is perceived as being unconventional and which counters the norms followed by the society. When successful, these behaviors evoke surprise and, of course, sometimes admiration by their followers. Charismatic leaders are also perceived as being a change agent. These leaders are perceived as agents of radical change rather than as caretakers of the status quo. Of course, these charismatic leaders, they show a lot of sensitivity to the environment. These leaders are able to make realistic assessments of the environmental constraints and resources needed to bring about any type of change in the organizational set up. Okay, my dear students, shall we now recall what we have learned? You already know that the importance of leadership lies in motivating people, creating confidence and building up the morale of its people. The various theories of leadership that we have studied in this module are the trait theories of leadership, the behavioral theories of leadership, the Ohio State studies, the Michigan studies and of course the contingency theories. Just to recall, the trait theories take into consideration the three most important traits in the form of their physical traits, their personality traits and the personal traits of the leaders which differentiates leaders from the non-leaders. On the other hand, the behavioral theories emphasized that there are certain behavioral traits which differentiates the leaders from the non-leaders. The Ohio State Studies Levin identified three leadership styles like the autocratic, the democratic and the laissez-faire leader. The Michigan studies found that the leadership behavior has important implications on the followers contribution to the organization and their emotional well-being. The managerial grid given by Robert Blake and Morton emphasizes the importance of the two basic leader behaviors that is concern for people and concern for production. The contingency theories of leadership focus on particular variables related to the environment that might determine which particular style of leadership is best suited 
for the situation. Thank you.